and I was always in the kapahaka group throughout the course of my life. So that was my whole introduction to the entertainment industry. But as you know, back then, kind of being a professional wasn't kind of a done career, so I went nursing, but inevitably came back to being what I was born to do, which is be an artist. I went on to write more plays, I uh, went on to act in a lot of stage, and that's really where I learned the nuts and bolts of acting as a craft was in London. I trained at a place called the Actors Institute. And I came back to New Zealand at the end of 98, 1988, and I was very, very fortunate. So this was my first substantial screen role. Is um, At that time, Don Salwin, dear mentor and friend, Don Salwin and Larry Parr had set up the Etipu Ere series. And that was basically, was meant to be six, but I think we only did five, one hour dramas made by, totally made by Māori. In other words, it was written by Māori, they were directed by Māori, they were produced by Māori and they were acted by Māori. And I was cast in two. The first one I did was actually Rawiri Paratene's variation of the theme, playing a prostitute. <laughs> and Don Salwin directed that. And then the next one I did was Roy Mata playing Gurley, which uh, Riria Brown directed. So a lot of our relationships began in that year. So that was early 1989. Uh, that's where I first met Lee Tamahori, where I met Riwia Brown, Don Salwan. You know, all of us have, you know, we're a small industry. Collaboration and camaraderie is very important to sustaining an industry, particularly when it's an industry that's not run on a lot of money. So therefore it's run on a lot of goodwill. I felt very lucky to be a part of that whole movement. And if I look at the people who came through Don Salwin's mentorship, you know, they're at the top of their game now, whether it's Sharon Hawke, whether it's Lewa, whether it's some of the actors, you know, we all basically, Don Salwin gave a lot of people opportunities to be able to work in this industry and to be able to make a living out of it. Because what was happening in the theatre at the end of the 80s, early 90s was we, and I was very lucky yet again to work with Jim Moriarty, another one like Don Salwin, who's given a lot of people opportunities and created a lot of work. And uh, I was involved with him in setting up the first ever uh, marae, theatre marae season, which was the same kind of kaupapa, same philosophy, uh, by Māori, written by Māori, for Māori, etc, etc. And so I did a lot of theatre work with Jim and was instrumental in that time where the depot kind of got turned into Takirua. And of course Takirua is a very established company now, which is great. And uh, my first feature film for a lot of us Māori actors actually was Rapa Nui. You know, not a great film, but a really great learning experience. I've seen a lot of the world, but Easter Island has got to be the most... It's like a, another planet. Uh, you know, they call it Te Pitoa Te Henua, the umbilical centre of the world. It's the, the energy on this little island and those craters and those moai. It was a phenomenal location. Then we got paid to be there. I loved working with the writer-director, Kevin Reynolds, and Costner turned up there for a bit, and yeah, it was an awesome introduction into actual big screen cinema. I guess the nature, <laughs> the nature of love. Aren't they beautiful when they're like that? They just drunk this. And one. I had auditioned for Once for Warriors prior to going to Easter Island, and so I, I learned halfway through being there that I'd been cast. And so I had all this time on Easter Island to prepare for Beth. And literally I got off the plane and went straight into pre-production on Once for Warriors. But I know I did a good audition, and I'll never forget it, because I had to go up home, I'm from the Bay of Islands, I'm Ngāti Henni, and I auditioned for Don Salwan in Whangarei, and I knew I did a very good audition. But let me just backtrack, because I remember when I first read that book, when the book first came out, and I remember reading it, and I thought, my God, if this book is ever made into a film, that is a, a role to die for. And... Um, and there's another really neat little story. A couple of years after Warriors had come out, Alan Duff released his next book, One Night Out Stealing, and uh, Dylan's bookstore wanted a, a read, reading. So they came to us, Māori, you know, the Māori Theatre at the time, and said, can we put something together? So it's like, yeah, so there was me, and I just selected a young Māori actor to read. They'd given us the excerpt they wanted to read it. And I had one session with them, and then we were meant to have another, no, we had one session with it to go through it, and it was a stunning piece of writing. And we're in Dylan's bookstore, and my actor got stuck up in Auckland. And the publisher was kind of freaking out, and she said, what are we going to do? And I thought, dang it, I'm, I just have to read it myself. <laughs> so I did, and Alan, Alan Duff's attitude was pretty, he had his back towards me, because he just, he thought the whole idea was a bit of a, yeah, whatever. He was not impressed with this idea. But I started to read it. And and he, it wasn't long into the passage, he turned around and he looked and he listened. 
And I finished the two pages of this extract, and he came up to me later and he said, he said, wow, he said, you read that exactly the way I wrote it. He said, how did you do that? Da, da, da. And then he said, have you ever read my book, Once Were Warriors? Because he said, you'd be a great Beth. <laughs> and he gave me a copy of Once Were Warriors that, that night. And he wrote in it and he said, maybe my Beth one day, I hope so. And that was two years prior to actually the making of that film. So it's interesting how those things kind of all lined up. And I knew that I was really blessed because I know a lot of people auditioned for it and I did a good audition. Um, and when I got it, I was so grateful. But also, secondly, I felt I'd earned it. You know, there's no way I could have done what I did with Beth Hecke in my first year as an actor. So I was very ready to play that role. And on a personal level, I absolutely fully supported the themes of the film and what, what it was trying to say. So I was privileged. I've always said that about Beth Hecke. She was my privilege, not my pleasure. It was pretty grueling going to work to get beat up every day or to cry. And, you know, it was a very short shoot, 34 days. I mean, it's quite extraordinary looking back now, what, 14 years later, to look at that film and think, God, we did so well.